Welcome to the Innovation and Compliance Podcast, part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Join us every week as we talk with industry innovators who are making compliance to help business run more efficiently and at the end of the day, more profitably. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back for another episode. And today I have with me, and I'm sorry I'm going to butcher your last name, but I'll give it a shot anyway. Chris Cremento's? <laughs> it was close enough. Cremento's is fine. <laughs> okay. Chris is the, well, he's with uh, PodFest Expo, and he's the chief creative officer at CK Productions. He is, I'm going to gloat about this conference in a little bit, but Chris, first of all, I wanted to welcome you onto the podcast, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Tom, I'm excited to be on this podcast and excited to get rolling. So PodFest Expo is a podcast conference, and if you're listening to this podcast, you know that people like me have to go to podcast conferences to stay abreast of industry developments. And I went to PodFest Expo in March at the recommendation of another podcaster and really walked away from it thinking it was the best conference experience I had ever received in any professional conference. I have been going to conferences for a long time, since 1983, in a variety of professions that I've worked in since that time, and PodFest Expo was head and shoulders the best. So, Chris, with that, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the history of PodFest Expo, how it came into existence, and what was your role and what is your role now? So, I started a conference company, really a community, for local business owners where I live in Tampa, and that was known as the Tampa Bay Business Owners. So, I had 2,000 at-bats at doing live events and tweaking and perfecting and learning. And one of the things people get wrong is they think that most people show up for the education. That is partly true. It's what happens in between the education and the breaks that is actually more important than the education itself. And that's kind of what you experience, Tom. It's how do you bring the community and the people to life and how do you infuse a methodology and a culture that then is communicated and felt across the entire conference. So PodFest came out of my local business network, and we had a gentleman by the name of Steve Cherubino. I said, Chris, can I teach about podcasting? And I said, sure. And from there, I went home, told my wife, we're going to start a podcast. She said, about what? I go, I don't know, but I'm just so excited. I want to do a podcast. She said, I want to do a podcast. And that was our first podcasting couple fight. Who's going to do a podcast first? And the only reason we both couldn't start at the time we were running that company that was doing 150 live events a year, we had a phenomenal business consultant. And he said, guys, you can't both start a podcast when you're doing 150 events a year. Something's going to fall. Why don't one of you start and the other one support? And I became my wife's support. She had a better niche. uh, She started Biz Women Rock. And I did research. There was no real big female podcast entrepreneur at the time. And I did her marketing. And then I did another workshop. And I noticed a lot of us that were learning needed support. And that's when I started the two workshops that then became Florida PodFest. Then we took the Florida off the name and invited people outside the area. And each year we doubled in size. But I took what I learned from the local community aspect and infused it into this conference. So it's very unique that you have the community feel you have at a three-day conference that only meets once a year. And it's all about retaining your audience, bringing back that culture, and creating programs that really celebrate the community. So you were part of our Trivial Warfare Night, right, Tom? Correct. That was one of our podcasts for the last couple of years. Jonathan Oaks says, Chris, I could do trivia where everybody could play against each other and bring them together. So I drove up to Jacksonville. He and I got to play trivia. We actually won. And I saw how, what an amazing team building exercise that was. So we brought that to the PodFest stage. So it's about listening to your community and thinking of elements to bond people. And I thought, what a great way to bond people that don't know each other. Put them up on a little team. They become a little tribe. And now within a big room of 50 or 100 round tables, they all compete with each other. And I can only speak for myself. I had a blast. I was on one of the teams. I'm sure, Tom, you did too. It was just a lot of fun. It really was. Here's what stood out for me, Chris, and had the chance to meet Chris last week at yet another conference. And I told him this at that conference, and it was the following. I felt like PodFest Expo 2019 was designed for me personally. I don't mean designed for me as a podcaster. I mean designed for Tom Fox. And I had never experienced that at any podcast 
conference or any other conference, literally since I've been going, I guess, before I became a professional. Each component of the event felt that way. The presentations, educational component felt that way. The vendor room with the individual vendors, it felt that way. And it felt that way when I would sit down and have a cup of coffee and strike up a conversation with my fellow podcasters. I met some people that I'm now proud to call friends simply by sitting down and having a cup of coffee with me and asking, what's your podcast about? And it really struck me that I've experienced each one of those singularly at other events, but I'd never seen that combination put together. And so I really wanted to tease that out with you and see how you're able to create that sense of community in what would appear to be really disparate areas. Well, you have to ask yourself this question. Someone's coming to your conference. What are they afraid of? Well, the first thing is, if you're an individual, that's a scary environment to show up at a conference and there's, I don't know, let's say a thousand people or 500 people you don't know. So we try and design an environment that speaks to the individual and makes them feel comfortable, that allows them to integrate. So we look at everything. For instance, the trade show floor, most trade shows, the exhibitors are usually treated as, oh, they're going to sell you. What a problem. We don't see it that way. We see our exhibitors as one of the most valuable pieces of our event because you have literally presidents and VPs of some of the largest companies in the world for podcasting sitting behind a table that want to talk to you. I don't know where else that's going to happen. So we figured, okay, how do we make that interaction in a way that for Tom or whoever's coming is not aggressive, but in a way that's informational. So we asked them all. And I remember when I asked them, they all thought this was weird. I said, I need you guys to give me a question that we could put on your table for the audience to ask you. And they go, what kind of question? I go, any question that would allow for really great engaging conversations. So now the individual goes into the trade show area. They don't have to think about what they're going to ask. They're going to ask the question that we already have mounted on that table from the exhibitor. And then the attendee has a treasure map and they know that there's a one in two chance that they're going to win a really cool prize because they know Chris has got, you know, I got their back and it gamifies the experience. And now we get this. So here's Tom. Here's an interesting thing because you're an attendee. So we did such a great job for you, the attendee. But two years ago, the exhibitors, we asked them, was there any problems? They said, yeah, we got too much traffic. Now, it sounds like a good problem to have, but here's the logistical problem. So you have to ask them, well, can you explain to me? what that means. They go, we couldn't take a break to go to the bathroom or to eat. So this year we had a exhibitor concierge that would give exhibitors a break if they needed it and also bring them water and treats. So in case they were hungry, we could make sure that they were fed while they were working the booths to make that experience better for the exhibitors and the attendees. So we look at every little detail. And I guess because I have a perfectionistic nature, At the end of an event, I definitely appreciate what we did right, but I always look at what we could have done better and then make sure we implement it for the next year. So we're already looking at elements that we could do better, and we listen to the community. One of the things we created a long time ago was our strategic alliance. It's where people actually get a numerical number that tells them what table to sit at, and then they change their seat four times over two hours, and they get to meet seven new people at the table. I actually had an actuary, if you don't know what that is, someone that crunches numbers professionally. Sure. Not you in general, anyone listening, I figured you would know. But an actuary out of Wells Fargo figure out this equation because I did the speed dating where you sit people chair to chair. The problem is the volume in a room of 100 or 500 people is so loud you can't hear each other. So we said, how can we put seven people at a round table and only one person speaks at each table across, let's say, 100 tables? So like all these logistical things we thought out, and then we thought people don't like doing their elevator pitch. So how can we take that out of the equation? That's why you'll see me prompt the questions up on the screen. So no one has to guess what they're going to say. They're just answering questions. So we really have taken feedback over years and years of doing this and brought it to PodFest to make it a very unique conference. And then for the education time, I travel all over the country. I'm always looking for great presenters. And I'm looking like right now, I could tell you we're looking for Audible We have a couple of people that are going to talk about how to monetize on Audible. Besides all the podcasting stuff, I found a lady out of L.A. that her specialty is how to record really engaging ads when you're selling stuff on your podcast. That's an art form. She does it for the largest podcast in the world. So I'm always looking for great talent. And then I will sit in those rooms, listen to what they have, and they'll say, hey, I'd love for you to speak at PodVest under one condition. They go, what's that? 
if you allow me to collaborate with you to tell you what my audience wants so we could create something custom fit for the PodFest community. So everything is really a hands-on approach. Here's the thing that struck me the most about the vendors slash exhibitors, Chris. Of course, there were some larger corporations there, but there were also, I met half a dozen sort of one, two, three men or women companies, and they just had an idea and they put it together, they got a business plan and they had a product. And I'm always more interested in doing business with someone like that, that I know I'm going to get a very personalized level of service. And I may actually make a difference being a customer, not simply from the money I might pay them, but if I can evangelize their products or their services to others, it may help on a growth on a more exponential basis. And I've signed up with Squadcast, Repurpose House. I've signed up with them there, and I'm now evangelizing for them because I think the services and products they've created are so great. But these squad casts were guys who went to high school together. I love hearing those stories, and I'm like you. I have a soft spot for those people, and we work with them, and we help them, and we make sure that they are well represented and are able to interact with the attendees. And if I could go a little bit in the other direction, I had a open lunch. I think it was the first day. And so I went into not the main ballroom, but I wandered in to a presentation by, I think it was the head of Hindenburg. And I'm not sure whether or not he had to pay for that slot, but I sat down and about half to 70% of the room were complete audio geeks. And they were asking him these incredibly detailed questions about, it's a audio podcasting product. And they were asking him incredibly detailed questions that were way above my level of sophistication in audio production. And this woman plops down next to me and says, here, let me show you what he's talking about. She opens her laptop and walks me through because she's on Hindenburg. And she just looked at me and she's close to my age and said, look, if I can do this, you can do this. Just listen. And I started listening. And I thought, where on earth can you go and have the CEO of a company sit down and give you his own product demonstration. And so I sat there mesmerized for an hour, just enjoying the entire scope of what he was doing. And he was obviously enjoying himself. He loves getting into the weeds of audio production. And then the third part that probably would not surprise yet was equally powerful was literally the camaraderie I saw from all levels of podcasters. A guy explained to me how to do an audiogram over a cup of coffee just because I happened to sit down next to him. And that sort of camaraderie goes to the next area I really was impressed that you guys did, and that was your scholarship and sponsorships. So I think the name of the program, I think it was Play It Forward, but I may have that confused. Pay It Forward, yep. Pay It Forward. forward. Okay. The first day of the first session, that I'm going to get to that session in a minute, I was sitting next to a guy who had received a scholarship, and he was a student at UCLA, And he and his buddies had started a podcast, and he was soaking up not every word, every letter of every word that the presenters were saying. And his enthusiasm was so great, it enthused me. And then I met several of those people, particularly at the roundtable or the where we all had to meet each other on the evening event. And I thought that was a great program you created, so much so that, I mean, I'm committed to funding a scholarship for the next event. But I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, because we have such an amazing community, Tom, I was in a group where a bunch of us, I was just talking about, you know, I'm trying to figure out ways to get more people involved. And Gabe Aloisi, a good friend of mine, but one of our key attendees said, hey, Chris, I was thinking about this. Can I buy a ticket and you could give it to someone that needs a break? And I looked at him like, what do you mean? He goes, well, I know you talk to a lot of people and I know you're always trying to help people out. But he goes, I want to buy a ticket. I said, you know what, Gabe, can I call it a pay it forward program? He said, sure. So then I mentioned it to our local, we have a local meetup. I said, hey guys, Gabe just did this. Five people said, we want to buy tickets. So the first year we had five tickets. And what people have to realize, I make sure they understand this, their fellow attendees that they're sitting next to, most of those people literally had to buy the ticket for us to afford to give it away. And then we find deserving people. And that pay it forward program has grown where we give away about 100 tickets a year now, because literally I have people that'll tell me, Chris, I'm going to buy two tickets this year, one for me and one for you to pay it forward next year. Or Chris, I can't make it. Can you use my ticket as a pay it forward for someone? And the answer is absolutely. Since then, Tom, the stories are endless. We had one mother, single mom. She showed up. She was floundering. 
she became a business partner with another person and her whole entire business has taken off since then. And she credits it with the pay it forward. It's changed her life. And then, so we actually have people that actually receive pay it forwards the next year of buying a pay it forward to give to someone else. So when we did this gesture, I have to be honest with you, there's a part of me that's like, man, people are going to abuse this. And what Gabe and I decided since he was the originator, you know what, let the people abuse it, focus on the people that need it. And quite honestly, very few, if any, people have abused it since we started it. And it's been probably one of the greatest things we've ever done. And the stories are endless of how people have, last year, I don't know if you remember, but we had a gentleman, Maxwell Ivy, the blind blogger. We were able to help him with his room, thanks to the Pay It Forward program. Otherwise, he was not going to have enough money to budget for extra food. He was going to eat like an apple and a sandwich. I said, no, 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 Maxwell, we got you covered. So I could use these funds to make sure that none of our attendees, no matter who they are, no matter what is going on with them, we could support them. So that way, when they're at the event, they're focused on the education, the camaraderie, not worried about what they don't have. And it's been amazing. We had uh, high school kids added last year. They found us. They asked me if they could buy tickets. I said, what budget do you have? They go, we're on a tight budget. I said to the teacher, why don't we give you guys a scholarship? Bring your class. You guys could attend anything that you want. And they were lit up like little Christmas tree bulbs at the end of the first day. And every single kid came up to me and thanked me for the opportunity. And they live in the local area. So that's just what this community is. And that's what the culture is. And that's why I always tell people, they go, why do people show up at PodFest? Who are your speakers? And I always say, it's not about the speakers. It's about the community. Yes, we have some of the best content you're going to get at any conference, guaranteed. But it's that community that you just don't see every day. It comes alive. And during the hurricanes, Tom, when Irma hit down here, we had one of our podcasters was stuck in the Keys. And her neighbor had two horses. And the neighbor was not going to leave Big Pine Key, which is hit ground zero for Irma. You're talking about 170 mile an hour winds. Our two friends that are podcasters called up Glenn the Geek of the Horse Radio Network. He then called up a friend of his and they found stables for the horses a day before the hurricane hit. And not only saved the horses, probably that lady's life and got them out of the area, all from knowing each other from PodVest. Wow. So let me tell you about this first session I attended, because once again, I had never seen this happen. And it was the panel that Jeffrey Hazlett led, and that's how I met Jeffrey. And it was on the business of podcasting. And it was an early morning panel, or at least the first one of the morning. So a few sleepy-eyed people strolled in, and I'm a early riser, so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and I was right up front, you know, sitting next to my... UCLA student friend now. So I was watching and it was a very informative panel. And I looked back and the room had filled up. And then I looked back and I could see just this mass of people standing outside the door. And I thought, wow, this must be a really uh, panel a lot of people wanted to see. And at some point, about halfway through, someone came up to the front of the room and said, look, we got so many people that want to come in. We're going to open this room up. And literally, you took down the divider, and the second half of the room filled. And I'd never seen that done in the middle of a presentation. I've seen a few times where people stood outside a door to hear. But that panel was clearly one that resonated. And you were able to accommodate a large number of the listeners literally on the spot. How did you garner that information and make that decision? Honestly, it's having a great team and letting them know that whatever we can do to accommodate the attendees is what we are there to do. So that happened organically on its own. I found out after, believe it or not. So just having a good team and knowing like what we can and cannot do. And really, that's also working with the banquet staff. I try to make best friends with everybody at the hotel because you know you're going to need to call in some favors. So there'll be sometimes when Certain things will happen. I will give them the benefit of the doubt. And then when I need them, they're there for us. So that was uh, very special that they doubled the size of the breakout room that you were in. Because <laughs> you're right, we saw people standing outside. And luckily, that was fixed in real time, which I've never seen that happen before either. That was a special circumstance. Don't forget, your room, unfortunately, the air wall broke the hotel and we had to shift the room you were in. The room originally was going to be in another area. So it was a little bit smaller than we had originally planned. So it was just, you know, luckily the hotel working with us and the attendees and the crew really making it happen. So I was really impressed with my team with that one. Chris, we've got just a few minutes left, but I was wondering if there's anything you could tell us about PodFest Expo 2020. 
So 2020, we have a lot of things in the works. It's March 6th through the 8th at Marriott World. But the most important thing is if you want to be an audio influencer and you want your message to matter, PodFest is one of the only conferences that actually has in another conference called VidFest going on at the same time. So we don't only teach podcasting, we also teach YouTube. And we're going to see a big expansion of that. And Tom, we created that for people like you that are now proficient at, let's say, podcasting. And you want to come back and you're like, wait a minute, let me learn a little bit about what's going on with these YouTube influencers. So we have two big conferences in one. Podcasting is our main conference. And then VidFest, we're going to see that grow as well. And it takes place at the same time, depending on what pass holder you get, you could interchange between the conferences. I just launched my own YouTube channel. I have eight different podcasts that I do. I just love communications and I love watching people get the word out. For those of us that are millennials or older, now is probably one of the best times to become an influencer because the older demographic is now really ingesting information and that's allowing for the new influencers to pop up to serve that marketplace. And I'm seeing a lot of that. And I think it's a really good time to get started with your information because a lot of people are going on YouTube for how-to information. They're going on podcasting. The growth over the next five years is going to be stupendous. Chris, this has just been, uh, I have to say, a ton of fun for me to sit down and be able to visit with you and pick your brain. And I really hope that uh, I'm going to evangelize not only about PodFest Expo, but the strategies, tactics, and techniques you utilize to try to get out into my industry, there is a much fuller, broader, and emotionally fulfilling way to do these conferences. So I can't thank you enough. And I greatly look forward to checking back in with you as we lead up to PodFest Expo 2020. Tom, it was a real pleasure. I will touch base with you before PodFest so that way you and I can work together. We want to help get as many people enrolled in this, and I want them to meet our amazing community, which you are part of. So thank you for being part of last year's PodFest and next year's. If you're a compliance professional looking for a convenient and effective way to fulfill your continuing education requirements, go to fcpacompliancereport.com slash courses and choose from four hour-long training packages that will keep you current. That's fcpacompliancereport.com slash courses.